Yo, what up guys, I'm Sammy and welcome back to the So Brothers channel and this is my performance review of the Nike KD Trey 510. So this is Kevin Durant's kind of takedown model or budget model. The shoe is going for 95 bucks. So if you guys do want to cop, I'll try to leave an affiliate link in the description box, but let's get it started right away with the Tractionese. And uh, yeah, they pretty much reused the same exact outsole and midsole as the KD 359, which is not a huge surprise. They've been doing this since, I don't know, they, they've been doing it for a long time. And for their budget shoes, they just kind of recycled the outsole and midsole for two years. They've been doing it with Kyrie's, LeBron, and now KD's. Uh, so yeah, it's, the KD Trey 59 was kind of weird because I had a gum outsole and that traction was really, really bad. But then here in the 10s, the traction is really, really good. So as far as the color goes, we have like a, what is this? Like a teal color and it's just, it's a really, really good bite. And it was a great bite from the start. I didn't really have to break it in all too much. You just felt really good right out the box and yeah on a clean court you're gonna get an amazing bite really really good bite actually you stop pretty much on the dime you know when you're going forward when you're doing lateral movements the bite is really really good also on a dusty court very minimal dust pickup so i don't know what it is maybe they changed up the rubber compound or maybe it's the the color of the outsole because from my experience the color of the outsole can change the performance of the outsole as well sometimes you know going from solid to translucent or semi-translucent and also white to black to whatever color it is it can change the performance just from my experience uh, it doesn't happen all the time but i've noticed it happens sometimes so maybe the, uh, that's what happened here from uh, the 9 to the 10 but this traction was really really good very minimal dust pickup and super easy to wipe if it did pick up dust as far as the durability goes durability does not seem good though uh, the grooves i guess seem pretty deep uh, I don't know why, but the grooves get very shallow, like right here, which is weird because this is where the, the highway areas are, right? Uh, but as far as like the grooves go here, especially here, like at the tip of the toe, it's a pretty soft rubber and uh, very thin grooves as well. So outdoor use is probably not the best option, uh, but it is a pretty cheap shoe. So you should be okay playing on outdoor court. But as far as indoor performance goes, I had zero issues. It was really, really good for me. And I enjoyed playing in the KD Trey 510 because of that. All right, moving on to the heel to toe transition, super smooth as well. So here in the heel, we have a nice curved shape and uh, we have Nike Renew, right? So it's pretty soft. So it feels very nice and smooth here in the heel. In the forefoot, we have a nice curved shape and a lot and a lot of forefoot flex. It's like almost too soft for me, right? So comparing it to shoes that I, I kind of like, I really like to play in, uh, like the Wild 10 with the carbon fiber like plate. Uh, if you guys can see like how it extends here into the forefoot, right? So it gives a little bit of rigidity, right? There's a little bit of flex, but also a rebound back. So when you're doing heel dominant strides and you kind of like go like this and put pressure on the shoe, it kind of propels you forward a little bit, right? So you obviously you don't feel that here in the KDs because it's really flexible here in the forefoot. I'm not saying it's bad or good. It's just a preference, right? Uh, and you know, for, I used to prefer like a softer flex, right? But coming from like the Wild 10, which kind of has that like, propelling spring like force, uh, it doesn't feel as good. But of course, if you want like really flexible sole, then this is great. And also for torsional support, it doesn't seem like it's the best. I mean, I feel like Nike hasn't been putting midfoot chain plates in their shoes. Uh, it does bend pretty easily here in the midfoot, but honestly, I didn't really have any like huge issues. It's just, it didn't, it just feels a lot more flexible here in the sole. I mean, it all, overall, it feels really nice for heel to toe transition. But like I said, it doesn't feel as nice as like something that kind of propels you forward, right? But of course, if something was super stiff, uh, then I wouldn't like it either. But here in the Wild 10, it's a nice like average, you know, there's nice flex, but also it's not too soft, right? Uh, but anyways, uh, there's that. Moving on to the cushioning setup. It's also one of my favorite you know, things about the KD Trey 510, right? So here for the phone, we have full length Renew and Renew is pretty nice. Uh, it has nice compression, but it does bottom out very quickly. Uh, also, it's not there's not a whole lot of rebound back or bounce. It's just more on the softer side of things. Uh, here in the heel, there is pretty nice compression. Although here on the lateral side, uh, I mean, all of this is caged, right? It's just more here in the back of the heel. And then in the forefoot, we have, it feels like a top loaded zoom unit and it feels nice. And you can feel that nice little bounce and compression. You know, it's not anything crazy like the 
zoom strobe unit found in the Kyrie Infinity. It just reminds me of like, you know, the, the PG-3 or the PG-2. And honestly, that's nice, especially for 95 bucks. You feel really low to the ground. Impact protection overall is pretty good, but if you're doing really hard impacts, it does hurt a little bit, especially when you bottom out the Nike Renew, right? So if you're doing heel strikes, it's gonna hurt a little bit. But for the most part, like if you're doing like not so hard landings, then you should be all right. But if you're super athletic and you need very good impact protection, uh, this definitely is not the best option. Uh, if you're looking for a responsive low to the ground setup with pretty good heel compression and pretty nice bounce in the forefoot, then this is a very, very good option. And honestly, the cushioning setup, I really liked. Uh, moving on to the material. So we have a mesh material and it definitely does feel pretty damn cheap, uh, but it, it doesn't feel like really, really crappy, right? I, I, I honestly, I don't really mind it all too much, uh, but on foot, it feels really, really great, right? So it's super soft. Look at that, extremely soft. There's really no break in time at all. It feels great right out the box. Uh, one thing I am worried about is durability though. This mesh material definitely does not seem like it'll be very durable, but I guess we do have a little bit of fuse here on the medial side in the toe box, which I would more rather have it here at the tip of the toe or the lateral side, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. Uh, yeah, it conforms to your foot very well and stays extremely thin. And then in the midfoot, we have this strap. I mean, I do like this strap because it is thin. It doesn't add too much bulk or anything. It's basically made out of screen mesh. And the outlining that is like a synthetic leather material. So I do like that, but it is a one-way strap and you can't really tighten it all the way down, right? So as you guys can see, the Velcro just goes right here. So if you wanna tighten it more, you kinda can't. <laughs> You know what I mean? There's only kind of like one way that you can really tighten the, the strap. And uh, when you really want to crank it down, I didn't feel that much of an improvement in lockdown here in the midfoot because it is a one way strap. So it's kind of useless, but I guess it does look pretty good. So I can't really complain about that. But functionality wise, in my opinion, it's not, it's not great. I feel like the laces cover pretty much what you need you know, and the strap doesn't really add on to that. So there's that. And then for the tongue, we have like an average, actually it's pretty minimal for the padding, right? And we have also an independent tongue. And then here in the ankle area, um, we have like an average amount of padding, um, but it's more like on top of the ankle collar. And it feels pretty nice and plush, but overall it's a really minimal feeling upper. Uh, not the most supportive material, uh, right, you know, it's super soft. I mean, there's not a whole lot of stretch to it, but it's really, really soft. So if you want like a really supportive material then this definitely isn't the best option, but it's it's thin, it's very minimal. It's also comfortable because it conforms to like the movement of your foot really well. So uh, yeah, I really didn't mind it all too much. All right, moving on to the fit. I went true to size and it fits me very well, right? So here in the toe box, the fit does get a little bit roomier because this mesh material does stretch out uh, over time. Uh, but as far as the length goes, true to size, I was good to go. And then as far as the width goes, I would say it's more around normal width, which is weird because Katie's are usually very, very narrow. Right? His signature shoe line, and also from the KD Tray 5 8, and like before that, it's always been narrow, but starting from the 9 and the 10, they kind of made it a little bit wider, which is weird, but it's definitely not like a super wide fit. Uh, but overall, it fit me very well. It's a very easy shoe to put on and lace up. So I had no problems with the fit, but of course, if you want a roomier fit or you have a wide foot, probably go up half a size. All right, moving on to the support and lockdown. So for lateral containment, I didn't really have any huge issues, right? Uh, so here in the forefoot, um, I experienced my my foot kind of hitting the material a little bit and rolling over on this material just a tiny bit, but I, it wasn't a huge issue. Like I didn't feel like it was a deal breaker, right? So it's maybe a little bit worse than the PG6, which definitely isn't bad. But if you're a very shifty person or you do a lot of cuts or lateral movements and you're a bigger dude, you'll definitely feel it here in the forefoot. So be careful on that. Um, and here in the midfoot, of course, we have the strap and then in the heel, we have, I guess, like this rubber piece, the foam coming up and an internal TPU heel counter. So lateral containment overall was good for me. I didn't really mind it. And for lateral stability, I was I was good to go, right? Uh, it's not a crazy outrigger, but it, the, the outsole and midsole do protrude out just a tiny bit. So I, I was pretty good for lateral stability and the ankle support is terrible. Uh, this material is very flimsy. This cut right here, uh, covers the ankle bone just a tiny bit, but uh, I still had really good ankle mobility. I actually did tweak my my ankle a little bit, my left ankle when I was playing, but that was my fault. I stepped on someone's foot, so you can't really do anything about that. You know, you'll roll your ankle uh, no matter what, 
<laughs> if you step on someone's foot. But like I said, uh, I had pretty damn good ankle mobility in the shoe. So ankle support is not great in the KD3510. All right, moving on to the weight of the shoe. So this shoe is extremely light, you know, I mean, budget shoes in general, because they lack tech, usually they're super light. So if I remember correctly, it's like 10, yeah, 10.97 ounces. Let's check the other pair. 10.9 ounces yeah so the average weight of my shoes is around 12 and a half ounces so that's extremely light does it feel light yes feels really light it feels very minimal on foot especially with this mesh material and it feels really responsive right uh, traction is great cushion is responsive you know there's not a whole lot of lag or like mush to the cushion and also support was pretty damn good you know, so i really didn't have any problems with you know feeling slow i felt very quick uh, when i was playing in the kd510 all right moving on to the ventilation it was pretty good right so there's actually pretty good airflow through this mesh material and like I keep saying it's super thin so it doesn't really keep in heat that well so yeah my foot was pretty cool when I was playing in the KD3510 so ventilation is pretty good here in this shoe uh, durability though durability does not seem like it'll be very good you know like I said this material doesn't seem very durable and the outsole also doesn't seem very durable renew also does not last a long time so honestly uh, the longevity of the shoe doesn't seem like it'll last like I don't even think it'll last the entire season right uh, like if you play hard I definitely feel like you'll run through the shoe pretty quickly of course you know it's good that it's on the cheaper side of things 95 bucks but I don't think like if you compare it to like the wild 10 or, or shoes that are like the hardens this shoe definitely will not last as long as those right all right as far as the aesthetics go I like it um it definitely you know it looks pretty damn good especially in this colorway that i have i really like this colorway too and the overall silhouette looks pretty good you know and i also you know this looks pretty sick i do like the kd logo on the strap so tell us what you guys think of the aesthetics down in the comment section below so wrapping things up super duper surprised at the kd tray 510 because i really did not like the kd tray 59 and uh the traction it was a huge problem for me in the nine but they I don't know what they did, but the 10 was really good for me, right? I really like the traction here. Uh, the cushion also felt great. Materials felt minimal. Overall, super lightweight too. I guess one thing that I would change is the support. Maybe make the material or, you know, fuse out the material a little bit. I don't know, or make, make the foam come up a little bit. Um, but that's pretty much the only thing, you know? Um, maybe add a mid foot shank plate. I don't know, that, I, I didn't really mind that all too much. So yeah, overall it's a really nice performer and I really enjoyed playing this. You know, when I was playing in this shoe, I really didn't need to bring backups, right? Uh, I did bring backups sometimes because you know, I sometimes I would miss playing in the shoes that I like to play, you know, like the Wild 10, the PG6, stuff like that, but uh, I didn't need to, right? So I would 100% recommend this shoe to you guys. Uh, if you're a bigger dude though, probably not the best option. I would mostly recommend this to guards. You know, if you're looking for a super lightweight and responsive shoe, then this is a great option. Uh, but anyways, that about concludes my review of the KD Tray 510. Again, if you guys do want to cop, I'll try to leave a link in the description box, but that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.